How's it going, everybody? Estas here. So the stock market did pretty well today. S&P 500 up $13, up over 0.4%. The Dow Jones went up $130, up half a percent with the NASDAQ, get this guys, hitting yet again an all-time high at $10,300, up $80 on the day, up almost 0.8%. And in this video, like we always do, we're going to be breaking down the markets, taking a look at some technicals. And like you guys, saw in the title, I'm also going to be sharing seven stocks that I'm looking to buy right now as we're wrapping up June and heading into July of 2020. And if you guys stick till the end of the video, I'm going to be sharing some bonus stocks as well as a couple of ETFs that I'm also watching right now. So if you guys find value in the video, hit that like button for me, consider subscribing to the channel and check out all the free links down below in the description box. If you want two free stocks from Webull valued up to 14 dollars and if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community. And again, all of those are linked down below and they're all free of charge. So let's get right into it, starting off like we always do with the S&P 500. And on this hourly chart, it is very clear that the bulls won the day. And we'll talk about a couple of points here that I'm watching. So yesterday, let's talk about yesterday for a second. We saw that we clearly did not break 3120, and that's been a resistance over the past couple of trading days, right? In particular, on the 18th of June, as well as the 19th of June, and again, yesterday, Monday, which was the 22nd of June. All three of these days, we struggled at some point at 3120. So the fact that we broke out of that, that is a very big win today for the Bulls. But hold on, Bulls. Hold on. Don't get ahead of yourselves because you clearly failed at 3150. And me, guys, I'm neither a bull and I'm neither a bear, right? I'm in the middle. I trade the technicals. I trade what's in front of me. And that's it, right? And that's kind of what I talk about here on the channel. I throw out all of the biases. And by the way, don't trade with a bias, guys, because if you're one of these ultra bears, ultra bulls, and you're trading, you can get smoked that way. Trust me, that's me speaking from experience, right? So the bulls failed at 3150, which if we pull back a bit to the 10-day chart, it's clear that th uh, 3150 has also been a uh, resistance, right? From back on the 16th of June, back on the 18th of June, or actually the 19th of June, rather. So yeah, the bulls, for this trend to continue, it's pretty obvious the bulls need to break out of 3150. So let me quickly extend this, um, you know, trend line here a little bit more to the right. So then we can end up seeing, okay, where could the S&P end up going next? So pulling back to the four hour chart, bigger time frame here. And by the way, you guys know I've been talking about on the channel, although the S&P has been consolidating over the past six, seven trading days, right? We're still in an uptrend. That is, you can't deny it, right? The channel, the uptrend channel here on the six month chart is still holding. And going back to that 3150 level, now that we have a bigger time frame to look at, if we break this point, this is where I think a lot more bulls are going to come in. I think the S&P is going to go up to 32.20, which if you guys take a look back in the beginning of June, that is exactly where we were, right? So technically, the markets really haven't gone anywhere in the past month, right? I mean, if you guys take a look, the markets back in the beginning of June, which at this point, it's about three weeks ago, they were right where we are now. So the bulls need to break out of 31.50. 50, 32, 20 before they end up bringing the S&P to wherever it goes, right? And, and, and you know, judging off the NASDAQ, the S&P might be next to the all-time highs, guys, right? Because, you know, if we break 31.50... 3220, you know, the next big technical spot on this uh, S&P 500 chart that we're seeing is around 3330. We break that and there, voila, we're at all time highs, which you guys can see are at 3390. So overall today, guys, bulls won the day, but we're still in this overall consolidation range. I'd say between, you know, 3080 to about 3150. So the bulls need to break out on top again, like I said, and let's say tomorrow, the bears come out and say hello you know it's, it's bear day today and you know we break below 3120 then we might be going and filling the gap 
all the way back down to, let's say, 3080, maybe 3100. So keep an eye on those couple of levels on the S&P. And before we get deeper into the Dow and the NASDAQ, guys, we got some interesting info that kind of rattled the Asian markets yesterday. I believe the European markets as well regarding the U.S.-China trade deal. And let's talk about this for a second, right? So at one point yesterday, Peter Navarro was being interviewed, but I, I believe it was Fox News. And at one point, the interview described Trump's efforts to make progress on the trade deal. And Peter Navarro, he said, is, or actually the interviewer said, is that over when he's talking about the, you know, making progress on the trade deal? And Peter Navarro said to Fox News, it's over, right? It's over. And that's kind of what spooked, again, those Asian markets in the overnight session. And Peter Navarro's comments, again, injected a strong dose of volatility into global markets with currency and futures markets dipping uh, dipping in Asian uh, Pacific stocks falling into negative territory before recovering after Navarro issued a statement that his comments had, quote, been wildly taken out of context. The comments have nothing to do, this is what Navarro was saying, the comments had nothing to do at all with the phase one trade deal, which continues in place, Navarro told CNN. I was speaking, and this is another quote here, I was simply speaking to the lack of trust we now have with the CCP, and this is again Peter Navarro's words, because after they lied, about the origins of the CV and kind of, you know, brought this pandemic upon the world. Again, this is not my words. This is exactly what Peter Navarro ended up saying to CNN. And then Trump actually came out yesterday at about 10.22 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when he tweeted this. The China trade deal is fully intact. Hopefully, they will continue to live up to the terms of the agreement. So, it rattled the markets a bit, what Peter Navarro said, Trump, and then he came out saying, oh, they took it out of context. Trump said, it's still intact. And then, boom, the markets... They recovered, right? I don't know what the futures were doing last night when it comes to the E-mini S&P. I was not um, looking at them, but let's see. Maybe they were. Uh, maybe they did take a hit. But either way, the markets recovered. Again, like I said, we had a green day today. And let me know your thoughts down below in the comments on the China trade deal, Peter Navarro, what Trump was saying, and so forth. And when we're taking a look at the Dow Jones here, guys, I know there's a lot of trend lines here. It looks a bit confusing, but... Just like the S&P, we broke a pretty major resistance over the past couple of trading days here, right? A pretty big resistance from the 18th was... 26200 26 uh yeah 26150 to 26200 and we also talked about that yesterday so you guys can see we're in a range overall but we broke out of a resistance in the middle of the range again being around 26150 we actually popped up to almost 26 thousand three hundred dollars today before pulling down and notice how we actually closed above the 26,150 old resistance as a new support here. That's a very good sign for the Dow Jones. And I believe the S&P did the same thing, right? We broke out of 20, uh, 3,120 and we held that as a support heading into the close. So this is a pretty bullish day um, overall, again, for the markets and for the Dow Jones, despite us still being in this range. And like I've been saying, the top half resistance on the Dow right now is around 26,500. And if we break 26,500, the next big level is around 27,000. That is uh, potentially where the Dow could be headed here. Again, if we break 26,500. And a couple of downside targets. If we break under 26,150 tomorrow, that's possible, right? Anything could happen. We might be going down a retest. 25.8, and then under that, that is where we can see a cliff dive on the Dow. Not saying that's going to happen. Again, we talk about different scenarios here, so we have to talk about this stuff. Um, you know, if, if we break 25.8, a next, uh, the next big technical spot could be 25,000, 25,200 here. And when we go over to the NASDAQ, again, this is the index that's not in a consolidation range because, again, they just hit all-time highs. You know, they're just soaring, guys. Tech is crushing it 
The tech stocks are holding up the market at this point. We all know that. You know, Apple was up another seven bucks today. Amazon exploded, hit fifty dollars, face uh, up fifty dollars today. You know, Facebook up three dollars today. Google up twelve dollars today. Microsoft up a dollar. Netflix was the only one out of the big names here that was down. It was down about two dollars. So overall, yeah, tech's just holding up the market. It's just been the been the name of the game. It's just been what has been going on. And you guys can see now heading into the close, just like the S&P Dow, we're actually pulling down on the NASDAQ. So where could we see a support in the upcoming days? Maybe 10,100, right? Maybe 10,120 to be more exact, right around here, right? Right at the previous old all-time high. Maybe we hold that as a support. You guys can see it was also a resistance, 10,120 that is, back on the 19th and yesterday. So that could be a spot where we see some sort of consolidation before maybe the NASDAQ continues the rally. So overall, guys, those are some points that I'm watching on the markets here for the markets, NASDAQ, Dow, S&P, and the Russell 2000 actually did pretty well today as well, up 0.4%, up $6. And those are some also points on what's going on right now with Trump China. Nothing crazy. And again, I'd love to know down below in the comments your thoughts as always. Let me know your thoughts on the market, stocks you're watching, and whatever, guys. Whatever's on your mind, I love talking to you and responding in the comment section. So let's just get into what I personally did in the markets today, guys, it wasn't much of anything, quite honestly, right? You guys know yesterday I bought into GDX. GDX is a gold miners ETF. I bought in around, I believe, $34.50, right? And I'm bullish gold. I've been saying that on the channel for months now, right? I'm very bullish gold. I'm bullish GDX, right? And we saw the big break in techni uh, the technical break out of this wedge. What day was this? This was on the 19th. So that was on Friday that we saw that big pop. And the fact that it continued into Monday, which was yesterday, that told me, okay, the bulls are continuing here. And that told me, okay, it's time to get in, Stas. So I actually got in, if you guys recall, after we broke out of the resistance at 3460, we actually rallied up to about 3520-ish yesterday. Let me double check that. Actually, 3530. And when we pulled down to 3430, 3420, that is where I got in on the rebound. Again, at about 3450. And I'm actually still holding those shares. I'm up a decent amount. If you guys can see um, from 3450 up to the high today, I was up at one point almost 3.5%, about 4%. But now into the close of the market, still up about 2.5%. Uh, but overall, it did drop a bit because GDX saw a bit of a decline heading into the market close. But nonetheless, it is still holding the uptrend, which is why I'm still holding my shares, guys. And you all know that I have call options, $40 call options, for GDX that expire in September, right? So very bullish on this. We're seeing a bit of resistance at around 3550, which was a resistance from back in the beginning of June. So for me to continue holding the shares, guys, um, for the rest of the week, we need to see a break out of that point, possibly tomorrow or um, Thursday. We'll see what ends up happening. And I'm also in Ulta, ticker symbol U-L-T-A. They didn't do much of anything today other than consolidate. They were up $1.20, up about 0.6% today. And this is actually a stock that I bought um, what day was it? I don't, I forget what day it was. It was last week at $215. No, it was actually on Friday that I bought this at around $215. So I'm down on the position a bit, nothing crazy, down about 3-4%. And my goal when I swing trade, guys, is scaling in, right? So I'm only in with this one about 10-15% of my goal position size. And I get this question a lot. When I look at swing trades, guys, my position sizes range from 5k on the very low end when I'm scaling in and I like bringing the positions up to $20,000, maybe 25-30,000 depending on what type of stock, you know, we're looking at. And with this one, again, I'm in about 10-15%, so I have a couple thousand in it and I look and I'm looking at buying more 
if we break out, again, we saw some consolidation today and yesterday, which is good, at about 205 bucks. Now I want to see the breakout closer to my cost basis at 215 and if we get that break guys notice how on let's say the 30 day chart if we get that break back to 215 and let's say out of 220 that's going to be getting us out of the overall downtrend that we've been in over the past couple of actually it's been about just two weeks here with Ulta right if we start getting out of that 50 SMA back into the 220s 225s 230s that's where I'm really starting to scale or looking rather to start scaling the positions so um, that's pretty much it guys I'm in Ulta I'm in GDX didn't do much day trading, you know, I'm not, I am, I do day trade, but you guys know I'm much more of a swing trader, that's just my personal style, and that's kind of what I've been covering on the channel here, really, since the beginning, right, I do some day trading here and there, but it's mostly swing trading, that's just my style, guys, and yeah, that's all I'm personally in right now, there are, uh, you know, I'm in space too, um, SPCE, that is, Virgin Galactic, I have some call options on that stock, um, I'm long on that stock, obviously, like I've mentioned on this channel before, I have a swing position in it that I bought, uh, it, it must have been a couple weeks ago now, in the $17 level, still holding on to that, and overall, I think SPCE could easily get back up to 1920, but all we need to do, guys, is break 18, 1850, that's been a sticking point right now for the stock, so until we get out of there, I'm not looking to add more money into uh, SPCE, and guys, with trading, it's really uh, important to have patience, patience is key, and especially when you're swing trading, um, yeah, patience is key, it is good to have some patience on your side, so let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on these trades, what have you been doing in the stock market, now, let's talk about seven stocks that I'm actually looking to trade as we're wrapping up June here, heading into the month of July in 2020. So the first one here that did pretty well, um, you know, yesterday, a little bit today is Work Slack Technologies, ticker symbol W-O-R-K. And we talked about how this could be a head and shoulders, right? We talked about that a couple days ago when it was still under 33 bucks. We talked about how, yeah, you know, this four hour chart, there's no denying it. This could be the left shoulder right here from about the beginning of May into the end of May, right? Left shoulder. The head could be that rally up to $40. And the right shoulder could be, it could have been if we dumped at 33 and ended up going 31 and under 30, right? That would have been very bearish. That would have been the completion of the right shoulder. But now we're actually not seeing a failure at 33 bucks, right? We broke 33 yesterday. And mind you, we actually held it as a support yesterday, as you guys can see on this five day, five minute. You know, we held 33, rallied out $34. This morning, pre market, we actually rallied out of that to $35 almost. So that's telling me, okay, the bulls want to hold 33, the bulls want to take this stock out of $34, and we actually held $34 heading into the close. So it turned out, you know, it was almost a head and shoulder pattern. It turned, it almost turned into one. But now that we're breaking 33, now that we close above 34, this is giving me some, uh, you know, some confidence that bulls are starting to pile back in. So for me to get in, guys, I'm going to need to see A, a hold at 34, no doubt about it. If we break 34, I'm probably going to scrap this stock, throw it off the watch list. But if we hold 34 tomorrow, the next day we start heading up, breaking mid 34s and into the 35s, that is where I see the upside with Slack Technologies, right? That is where I can see this thing start to, hey, maybe get back up to the high 30s and maybe take out that $40 level. So watch out for Slack Technologies there. Another one which has easily been my best performer in the month of June is NEO. And what did I say a couple days ago, guys, with NEO and over the past couple of days, right? I won three trades with this stock. And I always say, if you're winning, 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 
Don't get too greedy. Let the stock maybe cool off if you're winning, winning, winning with the same stock, right? Maybe let it cool off a bit. Don't try your luck that much because if you're continuously winning, you get overconfident and the stock gets more overbought if it continues pushing up. And that's kind of the situation I'm seeing here with NEO. I kept winning with it. It kept getting overheated, overheated, overheated. It hit $8 yesterday, guys, which is insane. And what did we see? We saw a nice pull down yesterday. Yesterday, right? It cooled off a bit. We saw another pull down today, almost 3%. It's cooling off a bit. So now that we're seeing it shaved about 80 cents from the high, about 11%. Now I'm interested in maybe getting back in to NEO, but I'm still not jumping the gun because there could still be downside in the stock. You guys can see we actually did not hold 730, 740 today as a support, which is not good for the bulls, right? We, that was pretty critical in my opinion for it to hold. And now we're seeing the break. You know, this could fill down easily to 690. Seven dollars, maybe even six eighty, six eighty five. So that's the price that I'm looking at here for Neo. I'm being very patient with it. You know, you guys can see on the four hour chart that is where the fifty SMA is, right around six eighty, six ninety. So if we get there tomorrow, you better believe, guys, I am definitely going to buy a little bit of Neo. I'm not going to go all in, throwing all my whole entire account. No, I'm going to just scale in a little bit with NEO and uh, hold it as a swing trade, right? That's kind of the goal at this point with ticker symbol NIO. And another one here, which is taking a bit of a haircut, finally, is Beyond Meat, ticker symbol BYND. We actually saw a high, 167 bucks. Now we saw about a 4% red day today, down $7. Let's double check and see if anything is... Uh, Okay, look. Oh, maybe this is why it's down. Okay, this makes a little sense. Starbucks adds plant-based meat by Impossible Foods to U.S. menu. And that's obviously a competitor to Beyond Meat. So that's not too great of news, I'd say. But still, there's a lot going for Beyond Meat. You guys saw they inked a distribution deal with China about two, three, uh, two, three weeks ago in over 4,500 locations there. They have products in uh, Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts. Do they have products in McDonald's? Did I just read? Am I losing my mind here, guys? No, that, that's Starbucks. I think they do have products in McDonald's as well. It's slipping my mind at this point. But overall, there's a lot going for beyond. And take a look. This stock was under $50 after the big crash. That is unbelievable, right? If you took a spec play on this, you know, put a thousand bucks in at 50, now that that would be well over 3,000, right? And of course, hindsight's 2020 at that moment in time, we did not know that was going to happen. But it's pretty incredible to see how some of these stocks are rebounding off the lows. It's just insane, right? So beyond me, I'm watching it not you know, I'm not jumping the gun on it, but I'd like to pick up shares anywhere from 145, maybe to 150, right? At some point in this range, that's what I'm looking at. And let's say we break 145, that's possible, right? We might go down to 138, 137. I have that level pegged as a pretty big support as well, based on previous highs, as well as the 180 SMA here, the gold line that you guys see on the four hour chart. So beyond meat, I'm liking it a lot. And retail play, number one that I'm watching right now is Foot Locker. And somebody commented on my video yesterday, Stas, you don't like investing in retail. The truth is, I don't like investing for the long term in retail, right? Maybe, eh, maybe Target, Walmart are the only two plays that I'd consider long term. Maybe Home Depot, Lowe's, if you consider them. I mean, they are retail, but they're a bit of a different play. But when I'm looking at some of these, you know, retail stocks for the long term, like Foot Locker, Nordstrom, stuff like that, I'm not looking at those to invest in for the long term. But when I'm looking at a trade, I'd love to trade them because if I'm looking at technicals, you know, momentum, I'm looking at Foot Locker and I'm like, okay, it seems like we're breaking out of 30 bucks. We're not quite there yet. We had a 2% day today up about 60 cents. We're starting to get there. And 
Kind of like what happened with work here is happening the Foot Locker. Going back to work, head and shoulders, potentially, it was a couple days ago, but now we're breaking out. Same thing with Foot Locker. Head and shoulders, potentially, if we if we failed at 30 bucks and dumped down, like we talked about yes, in yesterday's video, but now that we're breaking out of 30, we're seeing some momentum out of 30, which is a resistance, right? We almost hit $31 today. That means the head and shoulder uh, pattern is not playing out. This could be a very bullish move if we end up breaking out overall at $31, which again is why I'm being patient with this one. Um, if we break 31 up to the mid 30s, that is very possible as a trade. Again, for me, right? I'm not a person that likes investing too much in retail. Sure, maybe Target, maybe Walmart, but other than that, I'm not big of a retail guy. And uh, yeah, that's just me being honest. I'd love to know your thoughts down below in the comments section. And, and all I'm saying is there is potential here with Foot Locker in the short term, especially if we break out of there. Another stock here, Chinese play, is Baba, guys. We called this one out a couple days ago um, at about 225, right? We said if 225 breaks, we might fill up to 230. We did exactly that, right? 3% day to day, up $7 and 30 cents and at this point guys although we are close to all-time highs i think that if we break 230 guys baba is 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 due for another leg up maybe to 240 maybe to 250 and that's exactly what i'm watching and let me tell you guys why i'm thinking this you can see clearly over the past two years, we remember what happened back in 2018 that tanked the market with the whole quantitative tightening. We saw that. That brought BABA down to 130 bucks, And ever since then, we hit a higher low at 130 You guys can see it here. Higher low at 130 We broke up to 230 That was the higher high on this uh, monthly chart. You guys can see it. And ever since we hit that 2 230 uh, higher high, you know, we actually pulled down and we've been retesting the 180 SMA on the three-year chart. 170, we hit it, you know, as a support. Even before the 230 high, we were holding it and riding it out, right? And now that we actually, you know, confirmed a higher low after the 230 drop, and now we're starting to test again those all-time highs, I'm thinking that this thing is due for an explosion, right? Above 230, this could be a heavy mover. And since we don't know, you know, there aren't any resistance points above 230 because it's an all-time high for the stock, you know, we can't really predict where it's going to go. But all I can say is, again, there could be a lot of momentum, a lot of volume coming in on on that break at 230 where we could see another seven ten dollar move eleven dollar move which could end up equating to maybe three to five percent in the stock and the last one here before we uh, quickly go over some bonus ones is upwork ticker symbol upw K. And this is a freelance business. It's kind of similar to Fiverr. And yesterday they had a ridiculous day. They were up about 10%. I believe see here the stock went from 12 to nearly $14 in one day, which is a very strong move. That's actually over than over 10%. It's got to be. And on that move, which is why I'm watching it now, we actually broke out of a much needed resistance that's been a resistance for over a month, guys, from back in the middle of May. So we broke 1270, big resistance. Now we filled the entire gap up to 14 bucks, like I just said. And with today's session, we're actually down about 0.75%. We're pulling down. So this in itself could be a dip by entry for Upwork, right? You know, this in itself from 1415 down to about 1340 that's a pull down of about 6%. So tomorrow I'm looking at this dip, right? But the big move in my opinion will come if we break this big point, 1420. So we can make a move from 1350 to 1420, but the bigger move is going to be from 1420 up to 16 to about actually more like 15.50 to 16 dollars. That's the next area that I can see this stock end up going to. And if we pull back to the three-year chart, 
There's even more potential from there. If we break 16, 15, 50, 16, we could be going up to 17 and even higher, right? $25 seems like the all-time high on the stock. Not saying it's going there. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, but I'm just breaking down some points for you guys to watch out for some key levels over the next couple of weeks. So some bonus ones here, Nike. Nike's reporting earnings on Thursday. They did pretty well today, up 2.5%, up 2 and 40 cents. So watch out for this one, maybe to be a continuous runner heading into earnings. We got the bullish move today. We broke out of that wedge, like you guys can see here on the hourly chart. That is a very good sign for the bulls, but we are a bit overbought. We are a bit overextended here. You guys can see the RSI is at around 70. And whenever a stock's RSI gets close to 70 or even above, that means it might not be the best time to get in. It's it, And by the way, don't use one indicator to make decisions. Kind of use it like a supplement in your workout, right? You don't just work out or you don't just rely on protein powder without working out, right? That's That's stupid. So why would you rely on one indicator to make a trade? So we use indicators to supplement our trades, but we don't base our decisions off of one indicator. But all I'm saying here is... It's worth looking at. 70, it's a bit overbought, so maybe a pull down and a retest at 100 bucks, that'll cool off the RSI a bit. That could be a better entry right there. And when it comes down to some ETFs here guys, some some volatile ones to say the least, you know, SQQQ and TQQQ are my go-to when it comes to playing volatile days, right? These two trade based on the Nasdaq. One of them goes up when the Nasdaq goes up, that's the T, and one of them goes down when the Nasdaq goes down, and that's this one right here that starts with an S, right? And another one is SPXS and SPXL, which are the same exact thing, but they trade based upon the S&P 500. And there's a bunch of ETNs, guys, that actually got, uh, what's it called, delisted. And they're, they're pretty much toast. And I'll link a video down below that I did earlier today going over these ETNs they're delisting and kind of what's going on with them. And hint, hint, some of those ETNs include TVIX, which I've traded a bunch in my career as a trader, as well as UGAS and DGAS, DSLV, USLV are a couple of them, and there's a bunch more. So go down below and check that video out. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, hit the like button, consider subscribing to the channel, and don't forget to check out all the free links down below in the description box if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community. And if you want two free stocks from Webull valued up to $1,400, if you deposit $100 into the account, that again is linked down below in the description box. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Hope you all found some value in this one. Peace out, guys. Oh, and by the way, stay safe as always. Peace out. Had to get the in outro right. Can't leave you guys out the wrong way. Peace out, guys. How's it going, everybody? It's